one of the most challenging things to teach is jazz phrasing and articulation. It's easy to explain what to play, but much harder to describe how to play it. That is, playing the right note versus playing the note right. Proper phrasing and articulation of melody lines is incredibly important and is the thing that really sets the intermediate and advanced players apart from the beginners. Just like it's incredibly boring to listen to a speaker who talks completely monotonically with no inflections and makes you want to go to sleep, so it is with music. An improvisation that doesn't use any accenting or dynamics and just plays at the same volume with the same sort of touch all the way through is really boring. Now ultimately, the only way to truly develop good articulation is by listening to a lot of jazz and then trying to mimic and mirror the soloist's lines. Listening to people like Bud Powell or Oscar Peterson or Louis Armstrong, all of which had really really um, idiosyncratic and good and really strong articulation can give you ideas about how you should go about playing your own melody lines and how you should articulate your own improvisation. But there are of course exercises that you can do to improve your articulation. A good one is to play a phrase and accent every nth note. So for example, we could play six note phrases and accent the first note and the fourth note of each six note phrase. And let's, for the purposes of this exercise, just use swung eighth notes. So it'll kind of go ba 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 Right, the notes aren't really that important. You can even just do chromatic phrases like I did a couple times there. It's really the accenting over the notes that's key here. And you really want to be quite aggressive with your accenting to give your phrases and your lines that real bouncy quality that's so important to jazz. But ultimately, it's just about superimposing a layer of rhythmic patterns over the notes you're already playing to just create an extra layer of complexity. So that way you can listen to the melody, but you can also listen to the rhythm being created over and above that melody. So let's do another one. This time, let's play nine note phrases and accent every four notes. So again, let's say we accent the first, fifth, and ninth notes. And of course, you can mix up your patterns um, and make them a bit more asymmetrical. So for example, let's play 13 note phrases, accenting the 1, 6, 9 and 13 notes. Right, there are no hard and fast rules here. You can kind of make it up as you go along yourself and then just listen for what sounds good. And you don't have to accent the first note of each phrase either. That's just something I happen to do in my examples. Your first accent could be the second or the third note of a phrase. you need to stick to here, I would still accent every two to five notes so that you're not leaving the accents too far apart and therefore getting a, a phrase, a part of a phrase that's a bit too monotonic for too long. And of course, here we're just using phrases composed of swung eighth notes, 
but ultimately you could change the duration of some of these notes and still keep the same pattern or idea going. As long as you're still accenting say the first and the fourth notes, um, it doesn't really matter how long those notes are. And you can also combine this exercise with melodic continuity where you don't stop playing at all. You just continue playing swung eighth notes all the way through without stopping and accenting every third note, say. Or combine it with one of your favourite licks or riffs, accenting every third or fourth beat and see which variation you prefer best. Cool, thanks for watching guys, that's it for this video, see ya!